Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May the 5th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders, right? The week of the fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now look, I don't want to water down my words. I personally feel that this is the biggest betting opportunity fight fans have had to bet on a huge underdog straight up to win the fight. Right? Um, I got to tell you, I put money on this fight. <laughs> I got to tell you, I put money on this fight early. I did not get the odds you're getting right now. Somehow, and I have no idea how, this one is over my head, but somehow Billy Joe Saunders is going off as a plus 500 underdog. A plus 500 underdog. Folks, it doesn't matter who his opponent is. If you hear that Billy Joe Saunders is fighting in his weight class, in other words, he's not fighting Anthony Joshua. If you hear that he's fighting in his weight class and you're getting offered a plus 500, your response should be, thank you very much. Right? This is absurd. The bet I'm recommending based on actual odds posted, right? These are the odds going off right now at some online sports books, right? I want you to shop around. Is Billy Joe Saunders plus 500 to win the fight? Hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds at a plus 135. Right? Folks, let's just talk it through. Let's just think it through. But I need for you to understand that this is gambling. If the fight goes the distance and Canelo, who is a huge favorite with the judges in his fights, wins the fight by decision and the fight is in Texas, you're going to have a Canelo crowd in Texas. If Canelo wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. If Billy Joe Saunders gets sloppy in the last round and a half of the fight, understand, the under 10 and a half rounds gives you to the midway point of the 11th round. If Billy Joe gets sloppy in the last four and a half minutes of this fight and gets stopped, you lose it all. Why do I like the under 10 and a half? Because I'm getting a plus 135. In other words, folks, I'm getting plus odds on both sides of the play. This is a clear casino miss pricing. If Canelo gets a stoppage before the midway point of the 11th round, folks, you're good. You don't even have to be clever here. You could bet the same amount on both sides of the bet. And if either half of the bet hits, you profit. Right? Let's talk about the fight for a moment. I have a prior video up. I personally feel that this is the strongest challenge Canelo will have faced in several years. Right? Billy Joe Saunders, as I make this video, is unbeaten. What I want people to do, given that Saunders is a southpaw, given that Saunders is slick and can move and can box, what I want people to do is to turn back the clock to July the 12th, 2014. Canelo against Erislandi Lara, who now, ironically, at 38, has a share of the middleweight title. Well, what I'm going to do is read the scoring to you. Understand, Lara, like Saunders, Southpaw, 
great boxer, stick and move, right? Not quite the showman that Saunders is, but has an advantage on Canelo in terms of boxing skills, which I believe Saunders has. The scorecards on a fight that went the distance. You know what I always say, you always have one idiot scorecard among the three in boxing. So, some judge ruled the fight 117-111 for Canelo. The second judge ruled it 115-113 for Laura. The tie-breaking judge had the fight 115-113 for Canelo. Right, folks? Canelo scraped by this fight. Let's not kid ourselves. I personally thought Laura won the fight. I believe I predicted here online that Laura would win the fight. Well, let's fast forward a few years. And let's look at a different fight. Canelo, on November the 2nd, 2019, right before COVID hits, against light heavyweight champion Sergei Kovalev. Now, Canelo clearly wins this fight by stoppage, but let's remember the round of the stoppage. It's round 11. Now, this is a film you need to look at. Because understand, Kovalev is trying to fight like Lara in the fight. He's moving. Kovalev, the slugger, is on his back foot. Trying to win using movement and a jab. And occasionally lunging in the pocket with big shots. Folks, the movement destabilized Canelo to the point where... Let's go to the scorecards at the time of the stoppage. Two judges had Canelo up 96-94. Understand what that means. Had Kovalev won the 11th and the 12th rounds, these two judges would have had it a draw, assuming no knockdowns, no 10-8 or 10-7 rounds. Well, the third judge wasn't as generous to Canelo. The third judge in a fight where Kovalev is off script. Right? I've never seen Kovalev move like this in a fight. The third judge had the fight 95-95. A draw. In the 11th round. Think about that. After 10 rounds, that judge had the fight a draw. Now, let me just tell you, in terms of sticking and moving, right, I want people to realize that Billy Joe Saunders is far superior in that fight style than Slugger Kovalev. Right, folks, he's going to be out here with Canelo at 168. Right, where Canelo's carrying extra weight, weight that he didn't have when he fought Lara. So he's going to be dealing with a bigger Canelo, and he's going to force Canelo to move. He's going to force Canelo to deal with his showmanship. Now, to me, and I know this will sound crazy, this fight comes down to the first three rounds. Right? You're from across the Atlantic Ocean. You're in a different country. By the way, Saunders beat Lemieux in Canada. He's done the, hey, I'm the stranger, I'm the immigrant thing before. Well, let's be real here. What I'll say will upset some people. Canelo's going to start this fight. Like Manny Pacquiao starts his fights. Like Anthony Joshua starts his fights. With a two-round lead. Right, let's stop kidding ourselves. The fans love Canelo. More importantly, the judges love Canelo. 
As I said to you earlier, I thought Laura beat Canelo. I've seen the Austin Trout fight a few times. I, I can't figure out the scoring. Right? Canelo is going to have a two-round lead. We reward guys who wear the throne well. And by the throne, I'm not talking about some belt from one of these Yahoo sanctioning bodies. I'm talking about the role of boxing ambassador to the public. Right? A guy who has an image that attracts sponsors, that attracts fans, that attracts sellouts. Right? A guy who fights in Madison Square Garden and it's sold out against Rocky Fielding. Right? You get the feeling that if Canelo left the building, they would have been lucky to have 3,000 paying fans. The bottom line is we love Canelo. He's like Ray Leonard, right? He's a brand that boxing wants to associate itself with. There's a video, I have it in my favorites folder, where Canelo is ripping Golden Boy. It's a recent video made in the last two weeks. He's ripping Golden Boy. Obviously, he's not part of the Oscar De La Hoya fan club right now. But Canelo carries himself in such a way that, you know, he looks like he's being reasonable. This is as he's saying the toughest things imaginable. Right? He has the image. He's Teflon. He wears it well. I've seen this before. I lived through the 70s. I saw Ali in tough matches against Ron Lyle. Ernie Shavers, Jimmy Young, and somehow Ali was always ahead on the scorecard. And you understood something other than scoring a boxing match was going on here. I'm not accusing anyone of being on the take. What I'm saying is there's bias in boxing towards certain fighters. Canelo is a beneficiary, even against an unbeaten multi-divisional champion like Billy Joe Saunders. So what Saunders has to do is what Leon Spinks did against Ali in the 70s. Saunders has to show up and Saunders has to dispel the notion that Canelo is better. Saunders has to be a showman in the first three rounds. He has to let the judges know. If you're going to rob me tonight, it's going to have to be in broad daylight. Right? You're going <laughs> you're to have to overlook clear dominance here. Saunders has to show us that he can fight his fight in front of Canelo. Another model fight, the rematch. Ray Leonard against Roberto Duran. Right? Ray gets beaten the first fight. So Ray comes out the second fight. This time he's brought his legs with him. And Ray, in a fight where, according to my scorecard, Duran wins multiple rounds. But Ray's putting on a show. Bolo punch. He's staring at Duran. He's daring Duran to throw at him. He's basically saying, look, this is the part of my A game that this legend can't match. I don't care about Duran's victory over me the first time. I don't care about Duran's great run as lightweight champion. Right? Tonight, he's seeing me. That's what Saunders has to do. Right? I hope he studies the Ray Leonard Duran opening to the rematch because he needs to be that much of a showman. Right? When Canelo misses, he needs to treat Canelo like he treated David Lemieux. He needs to make it obvious. Look, I'm the better fighter. This is my sport. Whatever the hype, whatever the bias, I don't give a damn. 
this guy isn't me. This guy tonight can't beat me. At the end of three rounds, judges who normally get in the habit of voting for Canelo need to have Saunders up either 3-0 or 2-1. If he can dispel the goodwill Canelo has at the start of the fight, if he can take the crowd out of the fight early. In other words, you know, they're going to have the national anthems. The fight's going to start. People are going to be screaming, Canelo, Canelo. Right? You're going to have a lot of women in the crowd for Canelo. They'll barely know who Billy Joe Saunders is. But you and I know who he is. You and I know a plus 500 line is an absolute joke. You and I know that if Billy Saunders shows up as Billy Saunders, if the Billy Saunders who fought the first six rounds against Chris Eubank shows up for this fight and keeps the first six rounds going, in other words, doesn't have the second half of that fight, Right? If hungry Billy Saunders shows up, if the Billy Joe Saunders who beats Lemieux shows up, the guy who against a slugger literally just comes into the pocket, goes low at times. This is the guy who's the dancer, goes low at times and starts throwing straight punches to his opponent's body. If that Saunders shows up, I don't believe he can lose on the scorecards if the fight goes the distance and doesn't have rounds where he's hitting the canvas. In other words, if this is a boxing match, I believe Saunders wins by decision. But he has to establish the superiority early. We can't have a fight like the Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora fight where Parker is sleepwalking for the first three or four rounds. No, no, no. You can't have slow rounds here. Saunders has to come out. He has to let Canelo know, player, you don't have my legs. You don't have my timing. You're telling people you're good against southpaws, but yet you and I know you struggled against Eris Landy Lara. Right, Saunders has to point out, Canelo, you're 30, I'm 31. We're the same age. Whether these fans here in America know who I am or not, you and I know you can't box with me. So let me just point out, the idea that Kovalev, on all three scorecards, was within two rounds of Canelo in round 11, should tell you everything you need to know. As I've said here before, sticking and moving is a lifestyle. It's not just a fight style, it's a lifestyle. So Kovalev, who's accustomed to hitting you, hurting you, dropping you, he's sticking and moving that brother must have felt as if he had run a marathon by the time the 11th round came around. He was tired. He was huffing and puffing. You and I know a guy who sticks and moves and that's part of his game. Who's 31. Can do that all night. All night. I think Saunders has the clear advantage here. I think this fight is going to catch people by surprise. I believe it's a perfect storm. Right? The American press is in love with Canelo. Don't get me wrong. Canelo has earned the adulation. Right? This is a guy fighting guys. Right? I, I have nothing but respect for a guy who decides to visit the light heavyweight division, and of course, decides, well, in my one fight there, why don't I fight the champ? It's my understanding Canelo, after this fight, wants to take on Caleb Plant, 
I mean, what Canelo is doing is he is shining the spotlight on excellent fighters around him who casual sports fans might not know. Well, in my opinion, after this fight, they're going to know Billy Joe Saunders. Folks, I did not get a plus 500 in betting on Billy Joe Saunders. I was one of these guys who I saw the line around a plus 400 and I said, you got to be kidding me. I got I to gotta make this bet before I lose this line. And then, of course, absolute insanity happened. The line kept climbing. Kept climbing. It's now a plus 500. I want people to revisit the Kovalev fight, too, because Canelo takes a round off in that fight. He did not have the stamina. to fight from start to finish against Kovalev, who was fighting out of his normal style. I'm just telling you, Billy Joe Saunders is much slicker than Sergei Kovalev. Much slicker. Right? I'm expecting Saunders to look like a showman. Canelo is going to try to cut off the ring. I have no doubt on that. The point I want to make is understand that's not a new idea by an opponent against the Billy Joe Saunders. You remember the Floyd Mayweather fight? Mayweather comes out against Canelo. Folks, he's there early. Right? Mayweather's even bending over, throwing shots to Canelo's body. He's there early. He's ready for a boxing match. Now, that's a much younger Canelo. Canelo wasn't able to really hang with Floyd in that fight. But then you notice when Floyd started moving, wow, the gap between the two fighters was evident. Even though Floyd was older, Floyd was much quicker, much quicker than Canelo. Right? Canelo does a lot of things well, but he's not that quick. Right? He for some fights, had a knee brace on his knee. He can hunt you down. He can cut off the ring against slower fighters. Right? But understand, he's not going to be as quick or as agile as Billy Joe Saunders. What I want people to do in this fight is to look at Saunders' hands. They're a dead giveaway. Right? You'll know Saunders is in a battle if he has his hands up. Right? But like Ali, if you notice Saunders starting to drop his hands, having his hands dangling by his sides, and I'm talking about both hands, then you'll know Saunders thinks he has Canelo timed. Right? Let me also say this about Canelo. You know, I, I, Canelo is one of my favorite fighters. I deeply appreciate the guy's career. But he's made a decision. And I credit him for the decision. It's one of the reasons why he's, he's a fighter that earns a lot of respect. He's made a decision that he wants to fight the toughest guys out there. Now, he's proven me wrong before. As I said, I had Laura winning the fight against Canelo. I thought Danny Jacobs was going to beat Canelo. Right? But understand, now Canelo is in very deep water. Right? I'll be surprised. I don't care what the line is. Understand, two things happen when you're in a casino. Right? You have your own internal odds. And then you see the casino's odds. You know... The casino can have it a plus 500. I personally will be surprised if Canelo wins this fight. Right? Billy Joe, style-wise, to me, is tougher for Canelo than Kovalev. Understand, Lara makes a strategic mistake against Canelo in their fight. Lara, who's a pot shotter, would land big shots on Canelo, then he'd move out the pocket. Right? Had he lingered in the pocket, I don't believe the fight would have been this close. Now, Saunders 
isn't a pity patter. He's going to linger in the pocket if he feels he has Canelo turning. If Canelo gets a KO, and Canelo certainly is one of the harder punchers I've come across, then all right, I'll just collect on the plus 135 if that KO comes before the halfway point of the 11th round. <laughs> right? In other words, these odds are so ridiculous, you're covered for the first 10 and a half rounds, folks. But if Canelo doesn't get the KO, and if Saunders has been awake and realizes that at the start of the fight, he's down two rounds, if he works hard early, to take the crowd out of the fight, to switch the judges off the Canelo channel, then I believe you're looking at a major upset here. Let me say this too. David Benavides. In my opinion, that would also be a tough fight for Canelo. Caleb Plant. In my opinion, that would be a tough fight for Canelo. It's really a measure of who Canelo is. That those are exactly the fights he's pursuing. Understand, Abel Sanchez, the famed trainer, talks about how David Benavides would be a tough fight for Canelo. Right? Canelo has earned our respect because those are exactly the fights he takes. Let me just say here, He's taken another big challenge. The casino doesn't realize it, right? Plus 500 odds. You and I do. I believe this is the biggest opportunity you're going to get. Or have gotten for the last few months here. To pick an underdog who, in my opinion, should win this fight outright unless he gets caught and dropped. I like Saunders plus 500. I'm going to hedge to play with the under 10 and a half rounds. That's a high over under. The under 10 and a half rounds at plus 135. Understand there is only one unbeaten fighter in this fight. And it's Billy Joe Saunders. Understand too, Billy Joe hasn't been fighting Tom, Dick, and Harry. This is a guy who fought Chris Eubank who fought Andy Lee, who fought David Lemieux in Canada, right? He's real. You're getting ridiculous odds. In my opinion, this is an opportunity to rob the casino in broad daylight. But, again, words of caution. Canelo beat Danny Jacobs by decision, officially, right? In fact, he did beat Danny Jacobs, in my opinion. He beat Arislandi Lara, by decision. Understand, I'm going by my scoring of those fights, right? Not by the official scoring, right? The crowd is not with you on this one. They think Canelo is going to walk through this guy to the point where they feel if these guys fought six times, Canelo would win five times, right? As I see it, Billy Joe Saunders, style-wise, has the advantage. I like Saunders plus 500. I like the under 10 and a half rounds plus 135. Understand if Saunders pulls the miracle and gets the stoppage, and Saunders has 14 KOs, then you win both halves of the play. That's how I see it. Let me hear your comments. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Let me point out, too, that there's a moment in the Floyd Mayweather-Canelo fight where Floyd goes to his corner and the camera follows him. And Floyd is shaking one of his hands. His father's in his corner, Floyd Sr. The two guys had reconciled. Floyd Sr. looks at Floyd and says, Your hand. And Floyd nods his head yes, right? It's a quiet moment between the two guys. So Mayweather's out there with one hand. The last few rounds of the Canelo fight. And Canelo could not find him. Saunders is bringing that kind of movement. I believe Canelo 
has a problem with fighters who can move, right? I think the plus 500 here is an absolute gift. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments.